In this video, I will share my 7 top features that I use every time, almost every day in Cubase. Number one, the view options in the editor. So I've worked on projects that have like hundreds of tracks and you would get lost. So what I would do, select the channels I want to show and hit show selected channels only. I would just like to clarify that a lot of these keystrokes are binded to my stream deck. However, you can use all these keystrokes on your keyboard. That being said, the stream deck does change your workflow. I will probably do a separate video on this in the future. Make sure to look out for this. So how do we get back to the complete view? I have a keystroke that allows me to have all tracks again. There are many more options for your views. I will not go through all of them. Number two selected view options in the mixer. So on the right side of my mixer, you see all these group tracks and on the left side, you see all my individual tracks. Let's say this is your string group. You just select the group, show selected tracks only. You will only look at all your strings. So your right zone will still be group tracks, but the left zone will change. If you have a multi-screen setup, you could have one mixing console with only your group tracks and one mixing console with only your other tracks. Whenever you select a group track and hit that, the other mixer will show you only the connected tracks. Number three, lane presets. You probably know you need a modulation wheel and expression to make your samples sound more natural. If you open up the editor, you can add the modulation view, expression view. Doing this every time requires a lot of work. I set up these presets that allow me to go through different lane presets. And I took this one step further. I not only set them up down here, but I also binded them to keystrokes. So whenever I press one of these, it will automatically show Show me the lanes. Plus, I also just recently set up a macro that allows me to open the editor and use the controller lane setup for, which is super handy because whenever I open up the editor by clicking E on my keyboard, it will always show me the empty editor page. Number four, expression maps and how I use them. So first of all, let's talk about what expression maps actually do. In most of the libraries, you can switch your articulations by using those keystrokes, especially when you're in a workflow, you might just want to get somewhere a little bit quicker. So the expression maps lets you map your articulations. I'm not using it for this purpose, so I'm not like rebinding keys. I set these articulations up as so-called attributes. Whenever I want to change the articulations, I have to click on this and change it to whatever articulation I want to use. You could also use the lane setup down there. So let's say you want to have the first note Makato, the second one repetition. So it will actually change to these articulations. Before, I did set it up as the direction mode, but I had some struggles. You always had to kind of start in the beginning where the actual key is changing. It was kind of weird. For me, the attribute just worked way better. Number five, ASIO Guard. The ASIO Guard is one of the most important functions of Cubase. For example, on this project, I work on 70 gigabytes of RAM. If I wouldn't use the ASIO Guard, this project would crash. Excuse me for not knowing how to technically explain this, but the ASIO Guard kind of looks ahead and calculates the things a little bit earlier than they actually occur. But the cool thing is this would cause a delay when you record something as you guard also deactivates this function for the specific track that is selected so for example if i have the violin active as the track right now and i want to play the violin the asio guard will only be activated on all other tracks but the violin will be in real time something that still can cause an issue is when you have a plugin on the track that is currently activated that slows down your pc Number six, constraint delay compensation. For example, when you use a multiband compressor, this one introduces a latency of 20 milliseconds at a sooth, 42 milliseconds, maybe a mastering tool. Now we have like 80 milliseconds. We wouldn't really be able to play this instrument in real time. The constraint delay compensation, look at the plugins up there. It actually will deactivate the plugins that cause a latency. So you don't have to manually go in and deactivate the plugins. By the way, something that a lot of people don't know, if you bypass these plugins, they will still be active, which causes a delay. What you would have to do instead is hold the Alt key on Windows, I don't know about Mac, and then turn them off like this. Now they are turned off. And this is exactly what the delay compensation tool does. And number seven, the custom made shortcuts, macros, and logical editor. I will not go 
very much into detail about this one. So the logical editor is a tool that allows you to program your own code stuff. Super deep. What is even cooler, all these scripts from the logical editor you can use in your key commands, build your own stuff, put it onto keystrokes and or even put it onto your stream deck. One more thing that I use and this is like one of the coolest features ever, these macros. Whenever you hit one keystroke, it will cause a series of keystrokes to be activated. And this is what the macro down here does. Especially when you work a lot on projects and do the same repetitive work over and over again, this just allows to combine each and every possible combination. If you're interested in more macros and shortcuts, then I would highly recommend you a video that is just recently released to pop up on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Bye-bye.